There's a new report released that found that dozens of non-white Ukrainian residents who fled the conflict are now being held in long-term detention facilities in Poland and Estonia. Yeah, and some of them are being held three weeks or more. Here's a picture of what those detention camps are looking like. They're not pretty at all. And that photo comes to us courtesy of a joint investigation conducted by Lighthouse Reports, independent UK and other journalism outlets. And the experiences in these camps, they're being documented and they are harrowing. What we know is that one of the students said that they were stopped by officials as they crossed the border and were given no choice but to sign a document they did not understand before they were then taken to the camp. They did not know how long they'd be held there. There's a 29 year old black man from Nigeria who was studying in Ukraine before fleeing and he said this. He says his phone was confiscated by Polish border guards and he was given no option but to sign a form he did not understand. It was written in Polish, I didn't know what I was signing. I said I wouldn't sign, but they insisted I sign it and that if not, I would go to jail for five months. The student said he was then taken to court where there was no interpreter to translate what was being said so that he could understand and then taken to a detention center in a small village in what I believe is Lesnalio. Now there's another student as well who described their ordeal right now and they described that to an activist. He had said, my mental health, I'm just scared. We escaped Ukraine, it was very, very horrible experience. And you know it's very, the most biggest risk of my life. Now we are under detention. At the beginning, I thought I was being kidnapped. This is just, this really shakes me to the core, thinking these individuals who are fleeing conflict and a war that they had nothing to do with at all. And as a result of the color of their skin, they are not being treated like everyone else. In fact, they are being put in these detention camps feeling like they're being kidnapped, not getting the information that they need, and also not having access to the outside world. Apparently, it's been said that they could submit or they could send emails to communicate, but that's not even consistent. This is very, very upsetting. And also, we know that this is going on despite an EU protection directive that was issued on March 4th, and it stated that any kind of third country national studying or working living in Ukraine should be admitted to the EU temporarily on humanitarian grounds. And this directive also is supposed to help refugees fleeing the invasion to stay in whatever country they end up in for at least a year and to have access to education as well as to work while they're there. And also as the independent UK notes, this EU directive states that it also applies to nationals of third countries other than Ukraine residing legally in Ukraine who are unable to return in safe and durable conditions to their country or region of origin. And so what is the reasoning? What is the excuse? Well, I can tell you that in a letter to a member of the EU parliament in mid-March, Polish border police this is a letter here, confirmed that they're holding some at least 52 third country nationals. You may not be able to read this letter because it's you know in Polish, but hey, I can tell you basically what it says. The letter stated that this detention was necessary to carry out administrative proceedings for granting international protection or issuing a decision on obliging a foreigner to return. A spokesperson for the Polish border force said it couldn't give any detail about the procedures on foreigners because of the protection on personal data, adding that it is the court which takes the decision each time to place people in guarded centers for foreigners. And there are a number of African embassies out there in Poland who are also wondering why their nationals are being detained given this directive and they're trying to work on their release. This sounds completely fishy given that it seems that the only people being held here are black and brown. So Ravana, how does this sit with you? Yeah, I mean, first the fact that they're saying that the courts are making these decisions, but now we know that the courts aren't even having interpreters for these, you know, third-party nationals. It's that's not justice by any stretch of the imagination, and this is disgusting and racist and horrific. But it's not surprising given Poland's treatment of particularly Middle Eastern refugees. I mean, this is a country that was constructing a 16-foot-tall border wall. On their wall or their border with Belarus to try to keep out, you know, predominantly Middle Eastern refugees. 
This is a country that allowed Kurdish refugees to freeze to death outside its border while they were waiting to get in. I mean, their track record is not great. And I think, you know, a lot of us who are American, you know, we talk about the disgusting nature of our immigration system, but it's not uniquely disgusting. I mean, Europe has a massive massive immigration problem. And it's not of immigrants coming into the countries, it's the treatment of immigrants, the treatment of refugees, the treatment of asylum seekers. And this is not to say that I think by any stretch of the imagination that the white Ukrainians should be treated worse. You know, I think that all refugees should be treated the same or you know, in fact, better than they're being treated because you know, I mean, even the Ukrainian refugees are not having the easiest time. It's it's just a gross situation, especially thinking that these people are escaping, which is probably the scariest situation they've ever been in in their lives, just to be detained because of the color of their skin. Yeah, it just really shows us that anti-blackness, it's something that's universal. It doesn't matter, it crosses borders, it crosses languages. This thought that you are less deserving of humanity and equal fare, just basic treatment as a human being simply because you have a higher melanin count than others. And also we see using this whole documentation thing, saying that they lack proper documentation and that that's why we're holding them, really? So you're going to tell me that the white Ukrainians had all their documentation and it just so happened that the people of color were the ones who did not have any documentation? Get out of here with that. I, I couldn't even want to believe that, especially if the individual is just a resident of Ukraine. I'm sure they carry their documentation, their passports on them regularly. And so this thought that it's only a certain segment of the population coming from Ukraine who should be in this detention camp because they lack proper documentation just tells us that there will forever be pretexts when it comes to mistreatment of black and brown people in this world.